Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You are God. You are God. You are God. And there is no one like you. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for bringing us this far. Thank you for your hand upon our lives. Thank you for your word. And thank you for the many homes you are blessing through this commission. And we thank you for brothers and sisters that are even with us from their homes watching us on their silver screens. Thank you for the blessing you are bringing to their homes through this commission. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Bless us once again. Give us the grace, O oh God, the grace, the grace, the grace. For you are able to make all grace abound unto us. The grace. We are what we are by your grace. And whatever we are going to become is by your grace. Lord, we ask for the grace as your word come to us. Teach us and give us understanding. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Please be seated. God is great. <clears throat> God is great. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the high. Hosanna. Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. With the heart filled with praise. We exalt you, O Most High God. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name with a heart filled with praise. We exalt you, O Most High God. Hosanna in the high. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 4. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 4. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 4. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. This scripture is so powerful. I want to, you know, wait, wait, wait. I want to read this scripture on my news. Proverbs 22 and verse number 4. And I'm reading this time from the Everyday English Bible. The reward for humility and the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and love. The reward for humility and the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and love. The reward for humility and the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and love. Amen. Amen. You know, there are some scriptures that looks like it's, it's straightforward. King James says, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor. And every day English Bible says the reward of humility and the fear of the Lord riches, honor, and life. So if God said this, and I have always said it, the devil is not a fool. 
So if God said this, then what the devil will do is to make sure you are proud. <coughs> if the devil read this, and he knows that by true humility, the humility that is from the spirit, from the heart, by that one, and the fear of God, the fear of God simply means doing things the way God wants you to do it. Honoring God by this too, the devil knows riches and honor, no matter what, will become your portion. And he knows that riches and honor is going to what is going is what is going to make the church advance the kingdom of God, advance the word of God, and he doesn't want that to happen. Because when the word of God is advanced and it reaches every corner of the earth, then Jesus is going to come. And the coming of Jesus is the end of the devil. And so the devil is trying to find a way to prolong the coming of Jesus by, you know, finding a way to make the people of God receive the spirit of pride. Because he knows when pride comes in, forget about riches, forget about honor. I was meditating on this thing the early hours of this morning. And I said, God, have mercy on us. And our time is already up, so I'm going to let us go. And next week, I know by God's grace, we, we will go deep into it. But if you come to understand the meaning of the spirit of humility, you, you will cry to God for forgiveness. Any time in anybody's life that you have the slightest inclination of achievement. I have this good job because I went to good school. A believer. I have money because I have a good job. I come from a good home. I come from a rich background. My father made a lot of investment for me. When <clears throat> a believer begins to talk like this, without acknowledging the Lord, it is the beginning of the spirit of pride. You know, our dear sister read the scripture, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. You know what it means to acknowledge the Lord? It's, it's acknowledging God is not just singing. You know. Like, for instance, if I want to acknowledge, uh, let's say I want to acknowledge um, Brother David in the presence of everyone. So I stand here. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to have Brother David in our midst, a man of integrity, a man that built the CS Tower, a man that owns half of Chicago downtown, a man that donated $200 million to the orphanage in Africa, and what am I doing? I'm acknowledging him. You understand? When I talk about his accolades, his achievements, I, I, I present it, and so when, after all that, when I now call him, you will see the workings he will come forward with. Because he has been acknowledged. And <clears throat> that will also give you a sense of respect towards him. So you will know that he is not ordinary. So when the Bible says, acknowledge the Lord in all thy ways, that means when God opens his windows of blessings, and good things are happening. You acknowledge him. Almighty God. The giver of all. The lifter of man. The maker of all things. You made it happen to me too. You have, you have done it in my life. Yes, you gave me the wisdom to go to school. Many people went to school. What if you went to bed and you did not wake up? 
You understand what it means? Acknowledge him in all thy ways. Acknowledge him. David, you see, David was a spiritually smart man. He said, what do I have that I did not receive from you? I am bringing to you what is already yours. Thank you for this privilege, Lord. David won every battle, but he never took credit for it. He said, it is the Lord that strengthens my hands to war. Please, I'm not being sarcastic or critical about the way some things go on in the world. But believers must be careful the way they, they, they are hungry for rewards. I heard of a gospel musician that was even going to God because she was expecting them to nominate her and they did not. So she would never allow it. What, what is wrong with the church? You worshiping God or you are performing to men? Acknowledging God. Acknowledge him in the life of your children. There are many children that are the same age with your children and the thing they have done, you can't even hear it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I know girls that by the time they hit 15 years, they have already caused an abortion. 15, one five. And here you have your girl, your daughter with you, 16, 17, and she's gorgeously sitting in the house of God, listening to God's word, living a decent life. Acknowledge him. In all that ways. Don't think, oh, you know, I'm a good and disciplined father. That is why my children cannot. Be. Oh, yeah? <laughs> you understand? Acknowledge him. He is the one whose spirit is upon them. That is why they can't be influenced. I know, guys, by the time they, they were 14, they were already addicted to drugs. 14. And you have your sons growing, and they, 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 they despise that because they love the Lord. Acknowledge Him. Precious one, the, do you know the most dangerous thing about pride? The most dangerous thing about pride is the one who fights you when you are proud. That's the most dangerous thing. The one who fights you when you are proud. The Bible makes us to understand that God gives grace to the humble, but he resisted the proud. And so this is how the devil works. When God is lifting you up, he can't stop it because it's the hand of God. So the devil comes around and that begins to whisper things to make you feel like it's an achievement. You are too smart. You are too educated. You this, you this. You see, uh, why do you mingle with the low class people and all those things? And if you are not spiritually grounded and those things get into you and you become proud, the devil knows that all he has to do is to make you feel proud and he'll stand aside because God himself will now resists you. Because the Bible says God resists the proud. And so, when that's why I say the danger, the dangerous thing about pride is the one who fights you. If demons are fighting you, you pray and God will release angels. If humans are fighting you, you pray, God will intervene and release angels. But if God is fighting you, who do you pray to? By humility and the fear of God are riches and honor. Precious one, we owe nothing. In the kingdom of God, we owe nothing. We are only stewards of his abundance. Custodians. He has given us access to enjoy his abundance, but we don't own it. The sense of ownership is rebellious to Christ. The king owns his kingdom and everything in it. And he gives to his citizens to enjoy. What do I have 
that I did not receive from you. Who am I without Christ? What can I do? I can't live a second more without him. I can't move one step forward without him. I don't know about others, but me, I know. I can do nothing without him. Not absolutely nothing. Jesus said, without me, he can do nothing. Today, many people are telling Jesus, oh, Jesus, what do you mean? I've been to good schools. I don't need you. I have my certificate from Harvard. I, I, ha I have three master's degree. And that, and this, and that. When the devil slap you, let the master degree de deliver you. <laughs> you understand? That is why I always say, what are you going to learn that the devil does it? You see, a lot of people are so narrow-minded spiritually, so to speak. What are you going to learn secularly that the devil doesn't know? We're talking of somebody who lived in heaven with God for billions of years. We are talking of somebody who was there before God made man. Can you be smarter than him? We are talking of somebody who was able to convince one third of the angels in heaven to follow him. And they did. Without God, please, you are no match for him. But with Christ, he's under our feet. You understand? So, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Whatever. And, and, and let me say this. One of the proof to know that you acknowledge God is that everything about your life, when people see it, they glorify Jesus. You understand? You make everybody see this is the hand of God. This is God. Never take credit for any good thing God is doing in your life, in the lives of your children. And all those, never. Oh, my children is brilliant. Oh, yeah, in our house, that's how it is. My grandfather was a... Uh, very brilliant in school, my father brilliant, and so he's in the blood, you know, so he's not a, oh yeah? Somebody had his PAD, after that he got mad, crazy. You understand? I know somebody that was extremely brilliant academically, but today he has lost his mind. If you understand the forces that are working spiritually, you will acknowledge God in everything. You will give all the glory to him. You will give all the glory to him. This is one of the things that is missing. Humility and the fear of God. Humility before God. Living a life as if you don't have brains to take when God says it. Humility and the fear of God is riches and honor. So you see, we don't fight for, we, we don't work for riches and honor. You become somebody and it is bestowed unto you. That is why last week I said about what I'm, I haven't started that message, but I'm going to start teaching it. Uh, 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 what God showed me that what you become is more important than what you do. Because what you become will determine what you attract into your life more than what you do. Humility and the fear of the Lord. This is missing in the lives of many believers. Humility. Today, believers behave anyhow, they talk anyhow, they, miss, they, they react anyhow. Some people will do some things and you advise them, they say, as for me, that's how I am. Oh, yeah? Okay, that's how you are. <laughs> you understand? I told somebody, I said, okay, you are poor, that's how you are. Why are you praying for God to change it? Uh, you say that's how I am. So, and you are poor too, so stay. You, that's how you are. Stay like that. If you are sick, that's how you are. Don't pray for healing. You see how funny it is? When the heart loves God and you are yearning to glorify Him, 
You won't go to change anything about you that doesn't glorify you. That is why David said, search my heart, O oh Lord. David did not say, me, that's how I am. Me, you touch me, I touch you. You slap me one, I slap you to me. That's, don't, haven't you heard about David? That's how I am. No. He said, God, search my heart. Is there anything about me that you don't like? Change it, O oh Lord. Because I want to live a life that glorifies you. Humility and the fear of the Lord. How can we be in the house of God and do anything we want? And yet we are crying. Rebra, Kabirianda, Bondo, Kreka, Brondelika. Yesterday I said it to my pastor friend, he was laughing. I said, Some of the thoughts we pray, even God is careful. <laughs> You understand? We pray all kinds of prayer, but we don't watch our heart. We don't watch our nature. Are you a humble person before him? Or you are that proud and arrogant who wants to do things the way you want it? I will never forget the lady I was advising whose mother has done terrible, I mean horrible things to her. And what the mother has did to her is not something I even want to say. Very horrible. I don't know why a mother can do that, but hey, it's a proof that the devil is alive. And this lady grew up with bitterness. It's like she did not even want to hear the name of her mother again. She comes to our seminar after the seminar, she comes to talk to me. The friend, as, as a matter of fact, the friend that brought her, you know, led her to me. And uh, because she was going through some issues. And then after she told me all that she was going through, and then the, and I said, my dear lady, I'm going to tell you something. It will was, it was sound stupid, but that's the solution. He said, what? I said, forgive your mother. He said, pastor, you see, I, I pray we put my mother, you know, aside. Let's just talk about what I'm going through. I said, you know why we can't put it aside? Because what you are going through is as a result of your attitude towards her. Yes, God knows all that she has done to you, but the good news is all that she did did not kill you. You are still alive. You understand? So you need to forgive your mother. I know it's not humanly easy, but if you are willing, I'm going to pray with you. God will give you the grace to do it. But you have to have the willing heart to do it because God is not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. And then after some time, with tears in her eyes, he said, Pastor, I will do it. And I said, you can go ahead and cry. I understand. It's good. Shed those tears. Let it come out. You understand? Because uh, you see, it's easy for me to advise you, but I don't know if I were in your shoe. What I would do. So I understand how you feel and the emotional expression and all those things. I prayed with her and I said, this is what you are going to do. Call, call your mother if you have a contact. She said, I don't have it, but I can get it from my cousin or whatever because she hasn't talked to the mother for years. I said, get the number, call her. And when you call her, just tell her, mommy, I forgive you. I'm coming over to see you. I love you very much. And when you are going, buy a gift. That one almost threw her off. <laughs> Pastor, you mean I should spend money on her? I said, please, don't say on her. My mother. My mother. Long story short, eventually she, she did. And I told her that after you have done that, call me and let me know that. You know, tell me that, okay, Pastor, this is it. I went to see my mom, this, this, this. If possible, uh, you know, the way you people, what do you call it? Uh, oh, that you hold your phone. Selfie, yeah. Take a selfie and then let me see it. And she did all that. And after she did it and she called me, I said, now listen to me, my dear lady, you don't have to pray again. Those things that are going on is over. And now watch the, the, the role of good things in your life. And that is what is happening. The last time she tests me, sent me a test, she said, Pastor, how come believers don't understand the ways of God? That things can be so simple. 
He said, do you know how much I prayed and fasted for that issue? I said, you could have done that for 100 years. Nothing would have changed. You understand? I think yesterday also I was uh, talking to my, my son Kenny about that. And I showed her a scripture. I said, you want to be successful and what? He said, yes. I said, look at the condition. Honor thy father and mother, so that it shall be well with you and you will prolong your days. Yes. And so, if the world tells you when you are 18, bluff. That is demonic. God says, honor your father and mother, and then it will be well for you and your days will be prolonged. I said, now look at the mortality rate among the young. Because of arrogant, disrespectful, proud, you know. So they are dying anyhow. But honor your father. Honor your mother. And God's promise to that is that it will be well with you. That means there is something your father carries that he will release it to you. I made you to understand, I said, the problem that, the, the reason why this generation is struggling is because they have no respect for blessings. They think I've been to school, I get a good job, that's it. Who told you that? You understand? In the Bible, why do you think fathers should call their children and bless them? Were they lazy people? Were they jobless? By what? You see, there is a force that must be released for things to work because life, this life, is controlled by two forces, the force of God and that of the devil. So if you don't have the force of God behind you, hey, the devil will dribble you like a, a soccer player. And so when your father or mother from their soul release blessing, if your father look at you and say, son, you are blessed, it shall be well. No evil shall come. To you. He's not just talking from the heart, he's releasing a force on you. But today, the young generation is so proud that they despise all that they think it's nonsense. You understand? And so they don't take daddy's advice, they don't take mommy's advice. But the Bible says, by humility, and even to your parents, you are not humble. You want to do whatever you want. You want to go out with whoever you want. And then, you know, I was watching a certain movie. And, hallelujah. That would not happen to anybody in Jesus' name. You understand? This young guy at the age of whether 90 or 20 comes home with some a certain lady with some nasty hair. And then the mother was there. The mother was there. Who is this? So, mommy, yeah, that's my babe. That's my babe. And the mother was quiet. That's what? My bay, my bay. <laughs> the daddy comes home, and mommy told him, the father called him, he said, if I ever see you, and that bay, 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 whatever you brought him, and you have no idea the words that came out of the mouth of the boy. Bay, 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 what is it? And hey, man, that's my bay, and this day we are in love, and... So he just walked over the parents, jumped on his motorbike, rode to the house of the lady, picked the girl, the guy jumped on the girl at the back, I don't know where they were going, and they were climbing the hill and in the curve like this, and another truck was coming down, and right under the truck, all the two of them were gone. So I looked at it, and I said, may it not happen to anybody. But the attitude of the boy towards the parents opened the door for the enemy to destroy them. What if the boy had listened to the father? He would still be alive. You understand? So there are many things going on in the world that the devil used world leaders that are not believers to set up those laws so that he will have his way to destroy the youth. There is no parent in this commission that your children will be a problem to you in the name of Jesus. It is forbidden by the blood of Jesus. Amen. No force of hell will influence them to go the way of the world. Even if they try it, the Holy Ghost will pull them back. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. 
humility and the fear of the Lord. Just, just go home with that. Humility and the fear of the Lord. Humility and the fear of the Lord. When man looks at you, what do they see? Do they see you as the achiever or they see the hand of God? The Bible says when he turned our captivity around, we were like them that dream. Then the hidden said, this is the doings of the Lord. Now, do you think about that? The hidden did not say, oh, these people are hardworking people. Oh, they have worked hard. And No, no, no. When they saw them, they said, this is the doings of the Lord. May every unbeliever, every believer that says uh, that sees us give that testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. So when men see you, what do they see? When, when they see your, your success, your blessing, that mansion, that good cars, that, that hundreds of millions sitting in the account, and all the big, big things, when they see it, do they congratulate you or they praise God? God said, if you will let men see me, I will take you to any level. If you will let men see me, I will take you to any level. If you will let men see me. Precious one, never brag in your life again. And make things look as if you have achieved because you are smarter and you are this and this and that. No. Everything that happens, even if God gives you the moon tomorrow, let all men see him. Let all men see his hand. Amen. Amen. Humility. Walking with him. Serving him with our substance. Living our life that gives a clear proof that God, I totally depend on you. Our brother Javier was giving us that advice. Totally, totally depend on you. Just like God said, there is nothing he is going to withhold from me. May I receive the grace to also never withhold anything from him. Amen. Amen. Very important. And when we do that, when we are living like that, we are going to see miracles happening in our life. Healings will just be taking place without prayer. Because this is what I said, and when I was talking to my friends today, we said, I said, if people come to church, and their life will not change, and they, they won't be healed, and their captivities will not be broken, then you can't condemn them if they go to the fetish. Because everybody is looking for a solution. And if they can't get into the house of the, the Lord, they will go somewhere else. So the way we live our lives, Wait, wait, wait. You remember when John the Baptist asked them to go and ask Jesus, are you the Messiah? Because if you are really the Messiah and you know I'm in jail, you will come here. When they went, they said, ah, sir, our boss says we should ask you, are you the Messiah or we should still expect somebody? Jesus didn't talk. The Bible said he turned around and started healing. It's healing people, casting out demons. And then he turned to them and said, go and tell John what you have seen. Do you think about that? Mm -hmm. That means one of the proofs of the kingdom of God are signs and wonders. Are you the Messiah? He didn't say, oh, yes, I'm Jesus Christ, I'm Archbishop Most High, Reverend Left, Reverend Gordon, Jesus WK Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? No. He didn't talk. He just turned and started healing people. He said, now go and tell John what you have seen. That is why nobody come here sick and go back sick. Amen. It's forbidden. Amen. Any sick person you bring here, we don't need to pray. As he's sitting here at the Holy Ghost is ministry, by the time we close, the person is healed. A lady gave a testimony some time ago. I don't know how many of you remember that lady. She came to church and she said, while I was talking, she felt something move through her. Remember that testimony? Something, not really she has been diagnosed of whatever cancer. I've forgotten the way she said it. Something just moved. Nobody prayed for her. Nobody talked to her. She just came. 
And the following week, she went for the, another checkup, and the doctors were surprised. And then she called me, Pastor, do you know what happened last Sunday? I said, tell me, what happened? The house of God is a mysterious place. If believers cannot get solution, then they can go anywhere. You can blame them. But we have turned the house of God into religious centers. And believers, many people in church have become religious people. So they, 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 are, they have gotten accustomed to go to church. So they just go because that's our church. You understand? Do you know that we have people that have issues? And if you want God to direct them to you, that, hey, go see my servant. I have anointed you. No, no, he's not my pastor. He's not a pastor of my church. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't listen to you. What is wrong with us? You understand? So, we have to understand that when we come together like this, in the spirit of humility, anything will happen here. You don't have to come here with that issue and go back with that issue. Then you did not come to God. Mount Zion, upon Mount Zion, the seed of Jacob shall possess their possession and there shall be deliverance. So, if you came to Mount Zion, in the spirit of humility, I'm telling you, you must encounter that. And that is how I know that whatever issue that was there before you came here, you came before him, you came up upon his mountain. As you are going back home, you will never see that again in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we stand up to our feet? <laughs> So we quickly, we drink in the blood of Jesus. He said, Who, whoever drinks my blood will live by me. And we saw how humble Jesus was, right? Right? Yes. Oh, you want me to describe his humility? He was God, oh. He is now God. But I'm saying was because of that experience. God in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Without him, nothing was made. He made all things. And he could humble himself. He left all his glory, humbled himself, and took on the flesh of man. What kind of humility is that? God becoming man. Consider the God. God Almighty becoming man. God becoming man. He came down to the level of his own creation. And so the Bible says, God now ex has exalted him and have given him a name above every name. No wonder the Bible says, humble yourself before God and he shall lift you up in due time. Some of us, we are, too, we are in a hurry to lift ourselves up. The quest for things is what brings pride. You see something on somebody, hey, you must have it. It motivates your prayer life. I know a brother who was fasting and praying for three days because another brother who he was in the church before the brother came, came to a church with a brand new Mercedes Benz. No way. This is not fair, God. This is not fair. I have been serving you long before this brother came. This week I'm not eating. Nemandoko, abandeke, abandeke, abaku, 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 abaku. Mercedi, 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 Mercedi. Praying because he must also get the best. <laughs> Say that is not me. That is not me. You see, our love for God, our commitment, like I have just said. And the spirit of humility, church, everything will be ours. Everything. It doesn't even matter how much you have messed up. As long as we just make our mind, God, here I am. Here I am. Look at the prodigal son. Look at the nonsense he did. He came home, the father didn't even mention it. As if he did nothing. As if it never happened. Before the boy could even start the journey back home, the father was already waiting. That is why I hate condemnation. Don't condemn anybody because he fell into sin or did something wrong. No. You know why we easily condemn? Because you haven't died for anybody before. If you were the one that carried that cross for that long distance, climbing mountain and they are lashing you, and nails were dragged through your legs and hands, ha, ah, you open your mouth. You see, after all that Jesus did, what is he doing now? 
He's still sitting on the right hand side as our advocate. He's still interceding. You and I can do something wrong. That we, some punishment must come. He said, Father, look into my palms. I've paid a price for him. I've, I've paid a price. He doesn't have to survive it. He's still doing it. And so if we are drinking his blood, he said, he that drinks my blood will live by me. In other words, we, we will reflect who he was. Therefore, as we drink the blood of Jesus today, and eat his broken body, may that spirit of humility possess us. Amen. May that spirit of commitment possess us. May that grace that makes for true humility and true commitment and love for God, may it be released upon us through the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.